A few weeks ago, we woke up and everything changed in the world. Disneyland, the happiest place on earth, silenced its magic and turned off its lights. China's Great Wall was not great enough to protect its people. In New York, the city that never sleeps has now fallen asleep. And while all roads lead to Rome, not one person wants to take one. The empty shelves at our supermarkets have shown us how greedy and how selfish we truly are. And the nations that one day unmasked their strength now wear a face mask to cover not only just the virus, but their vulnerabilities. And our hugs and kisses have now been transformed into our world's deadliest weapons. And corona, in my language, means crown. And today, a virus crowns itself over our world, and it is showing us how fragile we truly are. All these facts allow panic to eat at our peace. And so today, I want to talk to you about place your peace over panic. And the reason is because when you don't have peace, you feel like you're being pulled into different directions, like nothing, nothing really satisfies you. You feel restlessness, frustration, maybe anger, worry, anxiety, fear, and it's all intermingled and remixed into one moment, one heart, one soul. And this is how possibly some of us feel. It's a terrible feeling because we're in a storm, we're in the unknown, and the crisis is drowning our entire peace. The crisis is eating at our peace week after week, day after day, hour after hour. But the truth is that we've been here before. We've been in crisis before. Our world has experienced crisis before. And the truth is that every time our world has gone through a crisis, a major crisis, the Prince of Peace has been present. So what I want to do is I want to walk you down the timeline of the crisis that our world has faced and to let you know that even though we went through this crisis, even though we've gone through deep waters, even though we've been in storms before, we've gone out of them and we will get out of this one as well in the name of Jesus, who is our Prince of Peace. In 1982, we got to face the AIDS epidemic. And this AIDS epidemic was terrible. We had never experienced something like it before. We had never felt it never seen it. It was something totally different and it took us off guard. In 1986, the savings and loans crisis took many people out of their homes, many homes foreclosed. And in 1997, we got to face the bird flu and the mortality rate was increasing exponentially. And in 1999, who can forget Y2K? I remember that as a young kid in elementary school, we, I don't know why they were promoting Y2K so much that they were putting it in our t-shirts. And I used to wear a Y2K t-shirt not knowing that it represented the end of the world because we thought that on year 2000, all our water systems, computer systems, all our electrical systems would stop and come crashing. And who can forget September 11th in 2001? That terrorist attack, that terrorist attack that shut down every airline, shut down our movement, stopped businesses. And then in 2003, we experienced SARS. This epidemic was so strong that it affected over 20 countries. And in 2008, the Great Recession hit. All credit, card, all credit markets fell. Banks had no more money. There was no more loans. And people lost their jobs by the thousands. It was a scary moment for every business. It was a scary moment for every church. It was a scary moment for every family. And then 2009, H1N1 hits and the school shut down. And everybody was fearing that the young people would not be able to go through it because all the adults had built immunity through the swine flu. And in 2020, it's the opposite. We don't fear for the young people. We fear for the elderly. And it's been the opposite in 2020. And it's crazy that it doesn't end there because in 2014, Ebola claimed its first life. And in 2020, here we are with the coronavirus. What I want to tell you is this, that from 1982 to 2020 right now, from 1982, God has been there at every crisis, in every dark moment and if we were able to get through that moment, those moments, I promise you this and I guarantee you this, God is present in 2020 and we will get through this one as well because the Prince of Peace is here. God is with you. God is with me. God is Emmanuel. God with us. And so today I want to read some scriptures to you. 
And I want us to read the word of God to kind of breathe hope and peace in your living rooms, in your bedrooms or wherever it is that you're watching. Look what Philippians 4, 6 says. It says this, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God your needs and don't forget to thank him for his answers. And I love that part because even though the answer is not in tangible form, we know that God is faithful because God never fails and his answers will come through in the name of Jesus. And if you do this, you will experience God's peace, which is far more wonderful than the human mind can understand. His peace will keep your thoughts and your hearts quiet and at rest as you trust Christ Jesus. And look what John records that Jesus speaks. This is what Jesus says. I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. Jesus is trying to tell you, hey man, don't worry. And I know that it's easier to say not to worry. And sometimes we confuse worry with concern because as Christians, as followers of Christ, as people that have placed our faith and our entire existence in the hands of an eternal God, sometimes we confuse worry with concern. I believe it's okay for us to be concerned. What I believe is that it's not okay for us to be worried because Jesus speaks to us and he says, I've got your whole world in my hands. I've got your whole world in the palm of my hands. And if I speak to you, peace, then be still. Do not worry. He says this in John 14. I am leaving you with a gift. Peace of mind and heart. The peace I give isn't fragile like the peace the world gives. So don't be troubled. Don't be afraid. The Holy Spirit is trying to tell you today. God is trying to tell you today through his word. Don't be afraid. Have peace. Let the peace of Christ that surpasses all understanding travel through this camera lens into your screens, into your living rooms. And by faith, allow it to minister to your spirit and know and rest that God is in control. I love how this next passage could be a resting place for so many of you. Earlier this week, I was going through a lot of stress and you can imagine all the stress that as a church we might be going through, trying to figure everything out, how to keep the church together, how to keep the leaders together, how to keep the volunteers healthy. We're trying to figure things out because we're limited, but I believe that every limit is an opportunity for innovation. And so earlier this week, I was feeling a little bit stressed, pulled by every direction, and I was feeling restless. And then all of a sudden, I get a message from one of our leaders and she sends me this verse in Isaiah. And as I read these words, I was reminded again of God's sovereignty. And automatically, the word of God is so supernatural that as I read those words, I felt peace come into my heart again. And I want to share these words with you. Here's what Isaiah 55 verses 8 to 9 says. It says this. This is what God says to you tonight, today, or, when, or this morning, or wherever you're at, at whatever time that you're in. He says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways than your ways and thoughts than your thoughts. Another version, the Living Bible Version puts it this way, and I love how the Living Bible Version puts it. It says this, this plan of mine is not what you would work out. <laughs> and I find that very interesting because God's way of doing things is totally different than our way of doing things. Us, in our thinking, in our finite thinking, in our limited thinking, we would reach point A to point B in a straight line. But with God, it's a different process. Another thing with God is this, that God is so sovereign that he will turn good things and the bad things and turn them into something that will prosper your life, into something that will bless your life, into something that will amplify your mind, into something that will stretch your faith a little bit. Because God uses all things and God works out all things, the good and the bad, for the benefit of those, for the blessing of those, for the faith of those that trust God and love God. And that's why I love this verse. It says, this plan of mine is not what you would work out because my way is not your way. Neither are my thoughts the same as yours. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my, way, my ways higher than yours and my thoughts than yours. 
So whenever you don't understand, whenever you're in a point in life where you feel like you are confused or in the unknown, allow these words to be your resting place. That God is in control. Even if it seems like God has lost control, even if it seems like there is no way out, even if it seems like it's all lost, God is in control. You need to know that God is far more intelligent than everything that is going on. God saw this happen before it happened. God knew this. God holds time in his hands because God exists outside of time. God was not shocked when all this spilled and spread. God was not taken aback when everything that started happening in the world started unfolding with coronavirus. God was not shocked. God is in control. God knows. God is in control of your life. God is so capable that he is in control of every single person's life around the world. And if we place our peace in him, if we place our trust in him, we can have this peace and we can place peace over panic. I love this verse in Isaiah 26 and it says, You, Lord, give true peace to those who depend on you because they trust you. God gives peace. God gives you peace. He gives you supernatural peace. Not like the fragile peace this world gives. He gives you a supernatural peace that will protect you if you trust him. Because it's crazy that even though things may be okay in the physical, outside, externally, if your mind is not okay, everything gets ruined in life. The mind is such a crazy place And this is why I'm trying to tell you today that you can place peace over panic. Do not allow panic to take hold of your mind. And so I want to give you a couple of points, four points today. How do we place peace over panic? Well, number one, you submit under the Prince of Peace. Look what Isaiah 9 verse 6 and 7 say. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders. And his name will be called Wonderful. His name will be called Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And here's the, here's the most important part. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Here's what I want you to understand. The more God's government increases in your life, the more peace you will have. The more God's government increases over your life, the more you surrender, the more you submit under God, the more peace you and I get to have. And if there's an area in your life that you have no peace in, it's just a simple sign that this has been an area that you have not surrendered or yielded under God. The truth is this, that peace is only found under God. Peace is only found under God. If you are not under God, peace can't be over you. If you are not under God, peace cannot be over you. And a lot of us really dislike this whole entire thing with submission and being submitted because it has a nugget of connotation for our generation. But let me put it to you this way. If I don't place a seed under soil, the seed cannot bear fruit. Your life is a seed. And it needs to be placed under God. It needs to be placed under God in order for it to flourish and become what it needs to become. And it's not a nasty word. It's not a weird word. It's not an old school fashion word. It's just a principle and a law of life. It's a law of life that if we are under God, we get to grow and we get to be fruitful. But if you remove yourself from under God and you are not submitted, it doesn't mean that you're a bad person. It doesn't mean that you don't believe in God. It's just that you will not have his peace because you can believe in God. You can love God and not be surrendered under him. And there are certain areas in your life that you don't have peace in. And this means that God is calling you right now to peace and to place peace over panic. But it starts with you submitting yourself to that Prince of Peace. Number two, pray every day. Pray every day. And I know that sounds very simple. In the Old Testament, there's this story of a king. And this king gets noticed that a huge, vast army is coming to attack him. And he feels afraid and he begins to panic. But then this king decides to place peace over panic. 
and he decides to pray a prayer to God and his prayer is recorded in 2 Chronicles and it's such a powerful prayer that I want you to pray and I want us to look at this prayer. It says this in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. If what is bad comes upon us, fighting, hard time, watch this, disease or no food, we will stand in front of this house, claim that for your house, and we will stand before you, for your name is in this house. Claim that for your home, that the name of the Lord is over your house, and we will cry to you in our trouble, and you will hear and take us out of trouble. God is faithful. He will hear you. His name is over your house right now. His name is in your house right now. And God's peace shall reign over your panic. Place him. Place his name over your house. Surrender to him and pray. And God is faithful and he never fails. And he will deliver you from your troubles. Some of us are extremely worried some of you are legitimately scared right now. Some of you are completely, completely taken out of peace. But I tell you the truth. If we pray the same amount we worry, we could change our world supernaturally in this season. I challenge you, place peace over panic through prayer. Look what 1 Peter 5, 7 says. It says this. Give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. Prayer will not work if you don't transfer the panic. Because sometimes we pray without faith, and we're praying, and we're praying, but we pray without faith, and we keep the panic, and prayer without faith is just griping and complaining in the spirit. I want to challenge you. In the name of Jesus, pray in faith. And the way that we pray in faith is when we actually release the things that worry us. When we release the panic and we say, God, you take it. God, I'm giving this to you and I'm going to get up from my prayer time. And I'm going to get up different because I am releasing in the name of Jesus Christ. Every panic, every fear, and every worry. Take it, Lord. I take your peace and you take my panic. I want to challenge you that every time you worry... Let your worry become an alarm to pray. <laughs> if you worry 10 times a day, let every time you worry become the alarm for you to pray. And I'm, I'm not kidding you. Pray this prayer in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. If you worry right now, let's pretend that you are worried after this sermon. If you start getting worried, go to Chronicles, 2 Chronicles chapter 20 verse 9 and pray that prayer over your house. Pray that prayer over your family. Pray that prayer over your church. Pray it over your generation. Pray it over your city. Pray it over your nation. That God will hear my trouble and he will rescue me from my trouble. And if you get worried five minutes after you prayed it again, let me tell you this. Pray again. And if you get worried after that, let that worry become an alarm for you to pray again. I promise you. I promise you. Peace tramples the panic any day, any time. Pray, pray, pray. And here's what we're going to do. I'm so fired up to pray that I actually think I'm going to go on Facebook Live this Thursday night and just grab my guitar, sing a couple songs, and pray with all of you. And it's going to be raw. I'm not even going to practice that much. I might not even know how long I'm going to be. I don't even know what we're going to be praying for. I don't even know the songs that we're going to sing. I don't even know if my fingers will actually be able to play the full way. But I'm just going to do it. You want to know why? Because I'm tired of panic. And I'm tired of seeing my generation be influenced under panic. And I'm choosing to place peace over panic through prayer. So turn on your post notifications through Instagram. I might go live there. And turn them on on Facebook. And I might go live on there. And we're just going to pray. We're going to do this thing one way or another. If Corona is trying to stop the church, we're going to show Corona that Corona has no power. And it's not a crown over the church. Because the church of Jesus Christ will prevail through any dark season of our life. Someone shout amen. And you better shout it like you mean it right there. And tell your mama and tell your daddy to shout amen with you right now in Jesus' name. Here's the third thing. Switch your news feed. What are you feeding your mind in this season? If your mind, if you're feeding, if you feed your mind with news articles, news reports, and social media posts about death rates, my goodness, what are you doing to feed your mind with faith? 
I wonder how many of you only fill your mind with God's word through church online once a week and you fill it with bad news the other six. How many of you are only filling your mind with faith during church online? And in the rest of the week, you're scrolling and scrolling through bad news after bad news, article after article, and you wonder why you live in panic. Let me tell you something. If your mind is a boxing ring, peace is one opponent. Peace is standing in one corner, and panic is the opponent. And if you keep feeding panic, who do you think is going to win the match? 100% panic all the time. If you're only feeding your spiritual life once a week, I'm talking to everybody, unbelievers, I'm talking to believers, I'm talking to Christians, I'm talking to Christians that have fallen away, I'm talking about Christians that are considering walking away from their faith, I'm talking to every single person, old, young, middle-aged, whatever it is that you are in, single, married, I don't know what you want, complicated, whatever it is. I'm talking to every single person here. If you keep feeding your mind with panic and fear, death rates and articles here and there about what's happening around the world, it's only obvious that panic will always trample your peace. You won't be able to rest. You won't be able to sleep. And I'm not saying that you and I should be ignorant of what's happening around the world. What I'm saying is compensate. Switch your feet. If all you do is feed your mind death, death after death, after death, after death, of course panic will reign over your peace. This is why it's important for you to raise up the voices of faith in this time. That church online is not the only time you feed your spirit. That you develop a habit right now in quarantine. That you get with God. That you worship God. That you pray. That you surrender and submit to the anointing and the presence of the Holy Spirit. That you actually devote some time and you have a chair time or a date time with Jesus. Look what the Bible says in Romans chapter 8. It says this. Those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things. And will put panic and fear because sinful things isn't only just lust and sex. It's fear, it's doubt, panic. But those who are controlled by the spirit think about things that please the spirit. If people's thinking is controlled by sinful self, there is death. But if their thinking is controlled by the spirit, there is life and peace. The peace of Christ that surpasses all understanding. You need to raise the voices of faith right now. Now. You need to feed your mind. You need to feed your spirit. You need to place peace over panic. You need to allow the voices of faith, the voices that are speaking what God and his spirit are trying to say to your soul. These are the voices that you need to lift up in this season. And if you do, you will obviously live in peace. And faith, faith is expecting God to move. Panic is expecting the devil to move. And fear, panic, disturbs a sound mind. Look what 2 Timothy says. It says this, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Who has given us? God has. What happens when all we feed ourselves is death? We need to be people that get close to God in this season, that you become serious about fighting for your relationship with God because God has not given us a spirit of fear and we need to be under God. We need to be close to God. We need to be connected to God because he's given us a spirit of love and a sound mind. And this is, is what so many of you watching me right now are missing. Sound mind. You've allowed and you're allowing panic to influence you, to control you, to maneuver you, and to keep you restless. And you're allowing panic to trample your peace. But if you switch your feed, If you lift up voices of faith, if you get connected to a city group, 
If you listen to sermons online, if you grab your Bible and open it and blow the dust off, amen, somebody. And you press into the presence of God. I'm going to tell you, there's no mountain that can get in your way. There's no valley that will make you fall and stumble or crumble. There is no obstacle that will keep you from peace because God has given us a spirit of love and a spirit of a sound mind. And here's the fourth thing. Put on your praise. And I have to say, put on your praise because I love how the Bible writes it down. Look how Isaiah wrote this down. He said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord has given me, the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning. Watch this. And the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. The garment of praise means it's something that we have to put on. And I want to tell you what heaviness means in this, in this, in the original language. Heaviness actually means darkness and darkness is depression, discouragement, and anxiety. And whenever the darkness tries to come at your door, I want you to be a believer that is rooted and founded on Christ that stands up and says, hell no, in the name of Jesus, no darkness, no depression. No anxiety shall come against me. I'm going to put on my praise. And if you can't praise by feelings, then I challenge you. Praise by faith. That even if you can't feel it, choose to stand up and praise. Choose to stand up and lift your arms to the heavens. Choose to place your eyes of your heart not on the things that we see in this world or the circumstances that we're facing, but choose to place your eyes on Jesus. And today, Jesus is saying, allow me to place peace over panic over your life. I love what Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 says. And these words are for all of you that have allowed panic to exhaust you. Because I believe that there are so many of you watching right now where panic, fear has tired you out. I believe that right now some of you are in a place where you don't even know what to do anymore. All solutions, all answers are exhausted. All choices are gone. And it's in these moments where we have nowhere else to turn but to God. And this is what Jesus, your lover, your savior saying to you, Matthew 11, come to me, all of you who are tired from the heavy burden that you have been forced to carry. I will give you rest. Accept my teaching. This is his words. Learn from me because I'm gentle and humble in spirit and you will be able to get some rest. So maybe you are not tired physically. But you may be tired emotionally. You may be tired mentally. You feel like you've been running and you're tired of running. And you feel exhausted. Here's what Jesus is trying to say to you today. He's trying to say, come to me. Jesus is saying, come to me if you're tired and weary. Because today I will give you rest through peace. Today I will trample panic under my feet. And I will take it. And replace it with my peace. The Holy Spirit is speaking to you right now. And this is why if there's some of you in this room. Whatever room you are watching from. And you have not received Christ. I want to give you an opportunity to receive him today right now in this moment. And may you receive him with faith. And may his peace enter your heart and your life. If this is you today and you're saying I'm tired. I'm weary. I'm done. I've looked at every single direction, every possible solution. All choices are exhausted. If this is you today, then Jesus is saying, come to me. And I want to lead you to him. And trust me, I want to lead you to him. So pray this prayer with me, okay? And if you can play that little melody. Da, 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 da. Close your eyes with me. 
We're going to make a prayer together. If you've never received Christ, today is your opportunity. Repeat this prayer after me. Father in heaven, thank you so much for this time that you've given us. Lord Jesus Christ, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Forgive all my sins. Cleanse me in your blood. Wash my spirit clean. Lead me to your presence and lead me to your peace. Thank you for this time. I place my trust in you alone. In the name of Jesus that is above all names. Today I say yes to Jesus. Lord, come into my life. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. I'm so proud of you if you made this prayer. And so today, we're going to end a little bit differently. Um, we're going to sing some worship and we're going to put on our praise. So I'm going to invite you right now to take a stand right there where you are. Come on, every single person, get up a little bit. We're going to worship God together. And if you haven't gotten up, I'm going to say, get up, come on, get up, get up. We're going to get up right now. We're going to praise and we're going to worship. We're going to allow the peace of Christ to come into our living rooms right now. We're going to say, God, here I am. And here I'm going to lay my burdens down today. And I want you to sing unapologetically right now. We're going to declare these words together. And if you don't know the song, then follow along. We have lyrics at the bottom of the screen. Let us sing together. down lose my worries in your love casting every care on you I have carried them enough we're not Stop your answer. 
down Lose my worries in your love Casting every care upon you I have carried them enough Not for a minute was I forsaken. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Come, Holy Spirit, dry bones awaken. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place.
part every living room every home if you know it sing with me and when the cloud is but a fist still I will pray because I know you're faithful now I hear the rain and when the cloud is but a fist still I will pray that you may minister to every soul and every heart that is listening that your peace that surpasses all understanding may move like a wave inside our minds and our hearts Father I pray that angels may surround every home every family, every neighborhood during this time and here we lay our burdens down today at your feet we transfer the burden we transfer the panic and we pick up your peace and your blessing and we receive it tonight today this morning we receive it and we receive it in the name of Jesus thank you so much Father in heaven for this moment in your name we all pray and we say Amen I will see you for church online next weekend. God bless you. Take care.